DMT or dimethyltryptamine is an indole alkaloid commonly found in nature. Some people claim that endogenous DMT is involved in spiritual experiences, dreams, and that it even functions as a neurotransmitter. Stay tuned and I will offer my perspective on some of these claims. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala. I'm a neuropharmacologist studying the mechanisms of drug action in the brain. In this video, I will briefly talk about endogenous DMT and address claims about its physiological role in the brain. But first, a few words about the pineal gland. According to some ideas, in ancient Egypt, the pineal gland was equated with the Eye of Horus. Later, esoteric traditions connected with the so-called Third Eye, and René Descartes liked to describe it the seat of the soul. Well, the pineal gland is a very, very tiny piece of gland, located quite centrally in the brain. This central location has likely been a key contributor for the creation of these mystical theories surrounding its function. But honestly, this thing is tiny. In humans, it weighs around 100 to 150 milligrams, so that's one tenth of a gram. Its primary physiological function is the rhythmic production of melatonin, which modulates our circadian clock and sleep patterns. As many of you know, melatonin can also be taken as a supplement to facilitate falling asleep or to alleviate so-called jet lag. Now, what about DMT or dimethyltryptamine? DMT is an indole alkaloid widely found in plants and in animals. It can produce profound psychedelic effects when smoked or when consumed together with a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. The altered states of consciousness produced by DMT can be so dramatic that some have even considered that these states are a reflection of another dimension of our reality. And in part, the potent effects of DMT have also raised the question whether endogenously produced DMT inside our brains could be responsible, for example, for psychiatric illnesses, dreamlike states, or mystical experiences. Indeed, one original hypothesis was that substances like DMT would be so-called schizotoxins, or compounds involved in the generation of psychotic states. Now, are these claims plausible and what do we really know about the function of DMT in our brains? While some studies have indeed been able to detect low concentrations of DMT in brain tissue of rodents, and in biological fluids, the biological function of DMT remains a mystery. And I would argue that it may not serve any particular biological function in the human brain at all. The main argument against DMT playing any key role is the fact that DMT likely exists in very low concentrations. Moreover, DMT is not that potent in activating 5-HT2A receptors. The amount of DMT produced by the pineal gland to induce psychedelic experiences would have to be in the range of tens of milligrams. Yet the tiny gland only manages to produce around 30 micrograms of melatonin each day. Some counterarguments examine the role of DMT biosynthesis from tryptamine, made possible by the indole and methyltransferase or INMT enzyme. And others say that lower concentrations could occur in many brain areas, being enhanced by uptake and vesicular storage. 
But INMT messenger RNA is not very highly expressed in the brain and tryptamine is unlikely to be its important substrate. Of course, we cannot completely dismiss the possibility that endogenous DMT has a role in the brain. And this is mainly because we truly still don't understand how much DMT there is in the human brain. But similarly, I think it's clear that the same argument also applies the other way. Because we don't know how much DMT there is, and arguably very little, it is unlikely that it's able to produce at least some of the psychedelic experiences that some tend to attribute to it. So, is there a real need to explain dreamlike states or mystical experiences or even psychiatric disorders with an endogenously produced drug like DMT? In my opinion, no. All of these things can essentially be explained by other neurotransmitters which are much better characterized and well known and or patterns of neural activity. But it doesn't mean that DMT couldn't have any physiological function in the brain or in the body. It could be for example modulating some cellular behaviors that have nothing to do with subjective experiences. The thing is that so far there is not much evidence to support these claims. That's all for today. For those who are interested in delving deeper, I've included a couple of interesting references in the description down below. Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe for future neuropharmacology content. Until next time.